Hi, welcome to our iCampus training of small group facilitators. We are very thankful that you are joining us for this training and thankful that you have answered the Lord's call and that you're willing to serve in this very important role that is crucial to a dynamic interaction in our small group ministry. And so we're going to take a look today at what a small group facilitator is and what are the responsibilities of a small group facilitator. In regards to the responsibilities of a small group facilitator, we're going to look at exactly what do you do? What do you do before class? What do you do during the teaching time? And what do you do um, afterwards um, during that small group discussion? And then there's a few things that you can do during the week. Uh, it shouldn't be a huge time commitment but once you get into a routine, you'll see how important this role is in developing vibrant groups where there's rich sharing because they know it's in a safe place with a small group facilitator that they trust. And so let's take a look first at what are the responsibilities of a small group facilitator. First, at the beginning of class, you want to, you'll be the one who they see first. Um, you're going to welcome members when they arrive, whether they're arriving in the physical room or whether they're joining us online. You want to recognize each person verbally or in chat as they arrive, especially welcome our guests. And you want to, on a regular routine, explain the Zoom features. For example, the mute button. It will be your job to make sure that everyone remains muted during the teaching time except for when they're speaking. Uh, so you want to give them ideas on how they can utilize their mute button when they desire to share, how to turn their camera on so that we can interact with them visually, and also how to uh, bring up their chat and to share things in chat. Don't assume that people know how to share uh, in chat. I just visited with a lady who asked me, she had been wanting to share her prayer request in chat, was going through some very serious things, but she didn't actually know how to make it appear um, in the chat. So simply typing out the message and pressing the enter button, let them know some of those basic features in using Zoom and to take away any fear they have of the technology. Explain online enrollment to our online viewers um, that they can go to iCampusBibleStudy.com and enroll in any of our iCampus small groups, uh, either our Bible study or our life groups. And then you also want to pass out enrollment forms to our guests in the room. Those will be available in the room and you simply pass those out to guests and you turn those in with the attendance sheet. And you'll also, during this first five minutes at the beginning of class, you'll want to encourage um, them uh, to, uh, to execute their small group success tips. We're gonna talk more about those in a minute. And then in this first five minutes, you want to encourage them to submit their prayer requests before class. Because when the teacher comes up, the teacher needs to be able to see the prayer requests in chat and also those that are turned in in the room by simply picking up a form on their way in, filling it out. They can set it up on the table so that when the teacher comes in, the requests that are turned in in class are ready to be prayed through as well as those who have shared those in chat. So give them some tips. You can do that even before this five minute period um, begins as they are arriving and before class starts. Then uh, you want to introduce the teacher. Whoever the teacher is, don't assume that everyone in the group knows the teacher. There might be some who are attending for the first time. There may be even some that have been attending for a while but never really were there at a time where the teacher was introduced. So it's just a good idea to introduce the teacher briefly uh, each time. So you do have um, five minutes um, just to welcome the members, uh, explain the Zoom features, make sure they know about the enrollment forms. I usually share maybe one to two small group success tips just as reminders to the group of uh, what to do when they enter into their final group discussion. It's just a teaching time that uh, if you do it on a regular basis, you'll see that they become cognizant of those during their discussion. And then also submission of the prayer request. Those are important. 
Then during the teaching time, what the small group facilitator does during this 40 minute time is to first take attendance. You wanna make sure you know who's online. Uh, you can ask them in chat to share their last name or their full name to make sure that you're able to record them in, on the attendance sheet. And then also those who are in the room and you take the attendance sheet along with any enrollment forms that have been turned in in the room and you place those in the resource room within the first 30 minutes of class. Then you want to oversee the chat during this time, bringing any comments or questions that are raised to the teacher's attention if the teacher hasn't noticed them. And then you want to minimize background noise by you, there's a, as a co-host, you'll have a mute all function that is available to you that's not available to everyone and you can mute everyone during the teaching time especially when you hear background noise building there might be someone who unmuted themselves to speak and forgot to mute them their microphones again so you can uh, watch that during the teaching time and then also to greet and welcome late arrivals if there's someone that comes in after the teaching time has begun just in the chat welcome them and acknowledge them so that teaching time will typically be 40 minutes. And then that leaves you 15 minutes for your small group discussion. This is where your role is very key. You're going to be facilitating a small group discussion and asking questions that will prompt this discussion with a focus on developing applications from the lesson that was just taught without teaching. This is not a second teaching time. This is a time that's designed to allow those who are there to begin to um, learn how to express spiritual truths in a safe place. And we really want to uh, focus on the applications. Uh, during the teaching time, we're, we're teaching the passage. But during this small group discussion, they wanna take what they learned in the passage and make plans for executing some great applications during the week. And you want to, during this time, attempt to draw all into the discussion. Hopefully you'll start building relationships with those who are in this group, and you wanna make sure that there's not one person dominating the discussion, rather that there's balance sharing. You can do that by gently just asking, you know, Mary, I didn't hear from you today. What do you think about this um, this lesson what struck you just little subtle ways of making sure everyone feels welcome in the discussion and then finally to uh, execute small group success strategies and we'll take a look at some of those um, some additional responsibilities that you'll have during the week outside of class will be to distribute the weekly prayer requests these are the prayer requests that are turned in um, during class time and we can share those and distribute those both through the private Facebook page and also through email. Secondly and very importantly is praying daily for group members by name during the week. Uh, you will see that if you pray for this group daily that it will directly impact their weekend discussions. And then we can be intentional about planning special fellowship events. And this you can work with the group and also with the teacher. Uh, we just need to be intentional in making sure that they have some outside time to get to know each other better, whether it's during class, having a special class day set aside just for their fellowship. Uh, we can be creative in developing some of those types of events. Then um, now, as we talked about, it's going to be key for you to uh, develop a vibrant discussion group. So how do you prompt vibrant discussion in those final 15, that final 15 minute period? Here is some example of some discussion prompts. You can develop your own, you can put them in your own words. These are just some examples. The first one is based on the fact that we're gonna be studying a passage, we're gonna be developing principles from this passage, and during this final 15 minutes, we wanna learn we want to kind of brainstorm on how to put these principles into practice. Application is so important, and sometimes that's missed when it's just relying on the teacher to develop applications. We want the group 
to take what they've learned and develop applications. And that's what this time is really focused on. So you might ask them, what principle did you draw from this passage that you plan to put into practice this week? So you're going from prince, passage, principle, practice. Secondly, thought change that leads to life change. They're gonna be, our, God's word changes our thinking. And so as a result of what has been changed in our thinking, how will that result in life change? With this goal in mind, you might ask, how is your thinking about God impacted by this passage? Attribute of God displayed? How could this truth lead to life transformation? Um, or you could ask just simply, what new insight did you gain through the study of this passage? Um, is there a promise to claim, a command to obey, an example to follow, an error to avoid, a sin to turn away from? then maybe what challenges you in this passage, encourages you, convicts you? What truth could you pray for God to manifest in your life this week? How could you ask God to conform your life to Christ in response to this study? These are just some sample questions. You wouldn't want to use all of these in a single discussion. You might just pull out one or two, uh, have those in front of you so that you can pull anyone out that applies to this particular group in this particular passage. And so this just gives you some ideas. Now, how do you successfully facilitate a small group? How do you develop a vibrant group that gets to experience rich sharing every week? And here's just some success tips that you can share with the group, letting them know this is what our goal is. And so this is what we all need to be doing. Um, some of it will be what you do. You want to pray daily for each group member by name. Encourage them to do the same. Uh, you want to establish a personal bond with members through prayer requests, Facebook interaction, emails, text, Zoom visits, Facebook interaction. Of course, you may not want to do that with everyone every week, but especially when you're getting to know a new group member, to establish a bond outside of the class time because as the group becomes comfortable with you, you'll find that that transmits to the entire group. If a group member is bonded with you, they're more likely to bond to the entire group, and that's what will inspire rich sharing. Provide a safe environment where, for genuine transparent sharing. Never allow one group member to belittle another, and certainly not from the facilitator. Make sure that they are encouraged to keep confidences, that what is shared within that small group is confidential and encourage them not to go out and share those, even with their spouses. This needs to be a safe place where you know, we make um, confidences a priority. Uh, be available to the small group. Share your email with the group and allow them to contact you, especially with prayer requests, prayer needs that come up during the week. And then encourage them to pray daily and to study God's word daily. Um, that will make sure that they're growing spiritually, which will benefit and make the entire group more vibrant. So those are just a few tips. We'll probably add to those as we go, but that gives us a good starting place. Now, during the small group, these are some of the tips that you might want to share with the entire group to make sure that, um, uh, to make sure that this is a healthy time for everyone. Now, this first one would just be for you as a small group facilitator. Remember that it's not your job to teach during this time. You're a facilitator, not a teacher. So avoid teaching at all costs. It's gonna be tempting when they ask you questions, but that's not your responsibility. So you don't have to go into this uh, being overly prepared from the material or prepared to teach. This is their time to share and practice sharing truth in a safe environment. So let the group know that you're not there to answer their questions. If they have questions, they can ask their questions and they can uh, let them know that you will forward those to me, but they shouldn't even be trying to answer each other's questions and teaching each other. This is a time where we're trying to focus on application. So it's not so much how do we clarify the material or teach the material. It's not a second teaching time. It's a time where we're focused on application. So in this, encourage them, and you, this is a tip you can share, to avoid mention of books, movies, links to outside sources, 
Instead, direct the group's attention to the Bible passage that we've just studied and that immediate teaching time. That's where we've been and that's where we want to stay. Uh, we don't want to get sidetracked with books and movies and outside quoting, outside resources. We just want to stay in the text. Um, this is a we, this is a teaching opportunity for each one, and it's really a, a waste of time, and it causes division when we attempt to bring outside influences into this group. Uh, the Spirit will bond this group together so that they can study the Bible passage each week. Um, encourage weekly completion of study questions with no outside assistance from commentaries. If they come to class prepared, then they'll have more to share during discussion time. And then discuss prayer needs. If the group has prayer needs that they want to discuss, that's perfectly fine. And then encourage them to pray daily for each other. And so these are some goals that you as a small group facilitator can have. You want to keep those, uh, you should review these both for yourself and then choose those that you can share with the group. Just giving them maybe a tip a week before class time uh, to keep them on track. And so um, one final area is just how you set up the room. Now, typically the room will be set up for you so that you simply have to come in, engage with Zoom that should already be open and you begin to welcome people as they arrive. But you'll want to know how everything works in case there is a power outage, how do you get the system back and running? So I want you to be familiar with that. There's two monitors in the room. One monitor is, is for the PowerPoint, the second monitor is where the participants that are online will be visible to the entire room, those that are in the room. Uh, if, you're happen, if you happen to be, this is not a part of your role as a small group facilitator, but if you do ever teach a group, you can simply download your PowerPoint from desktop, or to the desktop from your email or from your Dropbox. Now you want to start Zoom and the login information will be on the sheet that you should receive with my email address as the user and the password will simply be Lake Point. Um, when Zoom gives you an option of what meeting room to join, you'll be joining Jessica Taylor's personal meeting room is what it's called and there's the meeting room number as well as the link that you can just simply uh, give to people to click so that they can join in. Now, if the participants do not appear on the second screen, if everything, the PowerPoint and Zoom is all on one screen, once you open it up, don't panic. I've done that before. All you have to do is drag the Zoom over to the second screen. It's screen. It's so simple. All you do is uh, just use your mouse or use the pad here, touchpad, to hold it down and just drag everything to the other side, to the other screen. Um, you'll also want to open up the chat. You can, you'll probably, you're probably familiar with Zoom if you're in this position, and so open up the chat and make sure that you drag it to the second monitor so that the teacher during the teaching time can see the chat and interact with that. Um, and then assign a co-host. If you're on the main computer, then you'll have the opportunity to assign yourself as the co-host because you're going to be operating from a Chromebook in the room during the teaching time so that you can oversee the chat, manage the participants, uh, take care of muting issues, as well as typing into the chat during the teaching time. And so the Chromebook uh, login information is here as well. It's iCampus, capital V-O-L, capital C, capital V, iCampus Vol for volunteer at lakepoint.org, password simply iCampus2017. Um, when you arrive, you'll also want to locate the group attendance sheets. Those are usually on the desk where the computer is, and the live group enrollment form should be there as well. And then in the chat, if it's not already posted, in the chat, once people arrive, if you'll post uh, the link to the online enrollment form, then as they arrive, you can post a message if you haven't enrolled for the life group yet and you can access the online enro enrollment form at this link and it's icampusbiblestudy.com again if this seems overwhelming you're going to have the sheets that you can refer to if you have any questions at all feel free to reach out to me anytime 
um, I just wanted to give you an overview so that you can start to become familiar and comfortable with this role. But I want to ensure you that it is God who has called you to this role and it is God who will equip you. And as you serve, you will get the benefit of working so closely with the Lord. He has you here um, to minister to these people that he is bringing one by one uh, to take part in the discussion that he has called you to lead. And so trust him to equip you and be sensitive to the Spirit's leading. And it'll be my prayer for you that you experience great joy in the Lord as you serve, satisfaction as you see the fruit of your labor. So let's close up with a word of prayer. Father, we do love you and we do thank you for the privilege of serving with you in the ministry of your word and in the gospel of your son. I thank you for each small group facilitator that you have raised up. I thank you for those who are watching right now. And I ask your blessing on each one. I pray that you'll give them an eagerness and an excitement for the work that you've called them to do. I pray, Father, that they will have boldness and confidence in your equipping, and that as they serve, that they will see that the Holy Spirit is working in and through them in ways that is so far, so much bigger than each one of us. And I thank you for each one. May they recognize the importance of what they are doing, at the same time committing you um, this work trusting in you to equip and father we pray that all all work will our work will be done to the praise of your glory and with abundant fruitfulness in christ and it's in jesus name we pray amen